a lot of your achievements are in the field of, of, of carbon. Uh, indeed, you had this nickname, the, the Queen of Carbon. And oh, yes. The, <laughs> yeah, the Swedes gave me that name <laughs> a long time ago, and it, it, I guess it's stuck. <laughs> <laughs> so I suppose, I mean, I mean these days, um, you know, everybody's talking about things like carbon, um, nanotubes and buckyballs and, and graphene. But when you first started studying it uh, back in the 50s and 60s, um, it wasn't necessarily so well known and so popular. It wasn't known at so. all. <laughs> so why it, did you choose? It was a totally backwater area. Mm. And uh, that, in part, is an attraction. It's nice to work in something that's new and people don't know a whole lot about. Tell me about your, your early work with, with graphite. Well, uh, when I first started in, in, in this field, that's the one material that we had. You just go walking in the woods and you find uh, deposits of, of graphite. It's a naturally occurring substance. And yet, when I started my studies, we didn't uh, know very much about the electronic structure that was mostly unknown. So the first 10 years or so of my uh, independent career, I was doing that, just that, you know. So I mean, the, the work you, um, you then went on to do is, is it helped to achieve many things which led to um, several Nobel Prizes. I mean, which um, aspects of this work would you say you're most proud of? Is, is there one particular piece of work you did that well, really kind of stands out? There was a, I would say there was one piece of work uh, Maybe the uh, most interesting uh, uh, things were the beginning of the nanotubes. That was an exciting time, but there were just many exciting times. I mean, every decade had its excitement for me, so I wouldn't say there was just one thing that was preeminent. And if you have a long career, it's nice to have um, years of, of excitement. You know. You grew up in the 1930s in, in the Bronx. Um, I mean, what, was, what were your memories of life uh, during that time? Tough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, uh, worldwide, I, I imagine that most p young people, uh, even today, grow up in, in circumstances that are far from ideal. And uh, so, I think it's much easier starting out from uh, kind of difficult times and moving into better times. Mm -hmm. So you're always looking to improvement. The opposite must be pretty sordid. Mm -hmm. Did you, I mean, do you remember um, from that time when you first started to develop this interest in, in science and technology, do you, do you remember what, what were the triggers that really uh, inspired that interest? Uh, well. It, it, it started out all with self-study. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think that that's true of most people that I know. Uh, you're so interested in it that you read and you try when you get books from, uh, uh, you go to school, you get books and you read the, the whole book the first week of the, the semester. You can't wait to mm -hmm. get to the end. So mm -hmm. it was like that. In the early days, uh, I, w I was so excited to have a chance to learn such interesting stuff. <laughs> so. I know because you, you, you got a break uh, early on, you got the scholarship for the Hunter um, College. So was that, was that the first real big break in, in education? I would say that was uh, probably the most important break I got in my life because that took me out of the sordid mess I, I grew up in. and. Uh, uh, put me in a situation uh, where I had wonderful teachers and opportunities for learning that were beyond my imagination at that time. Everything else was kind of just normal uh, passage as people uh, develop. But going from a situation of mostly hopelessness and going into a situation where everything looked just lovely at the other end <laughs> is, was a big transition for me. You started working um, at MIT in the, in, in the 1960s. That's uh, right. I mean, what, what are your 
I amazing mean, that that I would I would have an opportunity to do that. Exactly. I mean, yeah. I mean, at, at that time, what what was it like for uh, women in science at a place like um, MIT? Did well, there uh, uh, there were uh, very very few, few mm. and far between. The women were were just not doing, not the physical sciences, not engineering. So. There were really very, very few of us. Mm -hmm. We didn't see them on the faculty. <laughs> but, uh, did, did, did it feel like at that time that um, a woman in science had the same respect as a, as a, as a man in science oh, yeah. in the 1960s? Oh, from the students, you got the mm -hmm. same respect. I, mm -hmm. And science is always like that. It's what you mm -hmm. know and what you do that counts. Mm -hmm. So, And uh, I was very fortunate. MIT is a meritocracy. So uh, you, you're, you're evaluated not mm. the way you look, but what you do. Uh, uh, that's the great thing about science, I think, you know, compared to perhaps other uh, uh, walks of life where, where um, it's qualitative evaluation. But science is somewhat different. Mm. <laughs> and do you think that generally in the US, do you think nowadays, there's more opportunities for women in science than perhaps there were. For whatever reasons, do you think it's um, easier now um, for women to go into, into science? Well, I, it's, it's always difficult when you're the only one and mm -hmm. you, don't see, uh, you don't see it even for yourself that this is a career path. And uh, I think nowadays young women ex have high expectations for themselves and, uh, and rightly so. Mm -hmm. They have talent. Why not? Hmm. Have, you, have you ever felt as a, a sort of really inspirational leading um, scientist who happens to be female? Have you ever felt a a kind of obligation to promote um, sort of the the opportunities for for women in science? I, so. I, I promote the opportunities of all my students, mm -hmm. uh, uh, but I I think that uh, women faculty members on average have larger percentage of women students than general uh, because they get attracted. They want to see what I do. <laughs> so uh, I, I, I believe that I've had a, a large fraction of women students, generally speaking. Of course, because there are not that many women in my field even today, most of the people I deal with are men. But, but I've had uh, really great women students. And they've done really well with me. Fantastic. 